तू शाहीन है परवाज है काम तेरा तेरे सामने आसमा और भी हैं यू आर अ फाल्कन सोरिंग हाई इज योर नेचर देर आर स्काईज येट फॉर यू टू कॉन का दिस लेजेंडरी कपलेट ऑफ पोएट इकबाल प्रोबेबली बिकेम द लाइफ लॉन्ग वर्किंग स्पिरिट ऑफ डॉक्टर सत्य पॉल द पाइनियर एंथोपिनॉर एंड द फाउंडर ऑफ द ए पी जे ग्रुप ऑफ एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन एज वेल एज द स्वर्ण ग्रुप ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज द ए पी जे ग्रुप ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशन बोस्ट ऑफ अराउंड ट्वेंटी नाइन एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन हैविंग अ लेगेसी ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ विच द ए पी जे सत्य यूनिवर्सिटी हैपन्स टू बी द ज्वेल इन द क्राउन टूडे In our campus walk series, we are standing in front of the APJ Satya University campus, which is located on the Palwal Sohuna Road in the Gurgaon district of Haryana. <coughs> the APJ Satya University claims to be India's first liberal arts meta university. Uh, we have with us uh, Professor Manpreet Singh, who is an assistant professor with the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the APJ Satya University. Uh, who will take us through to this exciting campus uh, i welcome you sir on this campus walk uh, from the entrance we find this entire campus to be a bit unassuming uh, what all wonders you have uh, stored inside wonders so we have wonders like school of uh, engineering and technology okay another wonder we have school of biosciences then uh, school of journalism and mass communication school of pharmaceutical sciences school of biosciences uh, school of education right and uh, there are multiple departments in the in those wonders so uh, small packets uh, small wonders are there in those uh, bigger wonders right and as in school of engineering and technology we have uh, computer science department mechanical department civil engineering right and uh, if if i go for uh, uh, school of biosciences we have uh, uh, bachelor's program for uh, biosciences okay and we have masters program we have phd programs for them right so those uh, specialized domains the small wonders are there which are uh, okay school of journalism and mass communication we have graduate programs undergraduate programs right and uh, moreover if i do not talk of all those departments uh, thoroughly okay i would like to stress upon one point as you already mentioned that uh, it is a liberal art first liberal art in meta university so a student actually when when student gets admitted into this university he is not taken into on particular stream he is actually taken an admission into a university so uh, by the end of a second year one year or second year so if if a student thinks that uh, uh, earlier he was supposed to join as as a btech in computer science but now he he has thought of computer science is not a cup of tea for him he is more interested in mechanical engineering so he can switch over to mechanical engineering so this is cross disciplinary thing right so uh, multiple departments multiple wonders so uh, the real thing will only uh, be get to know known to you if you actually uh, enter into it and uh, Uh, so it somewhere seems like that the liberal arts has somewhere inspired the unassumingness and the non imposing character of this campus which looks quite light and quite serene from the entrance so let's let's walk inside this magnificent campus which claims to be india's first liberal arts and meta university we are now with professor kamal khan devedi the honorable vice chancellor of the apj satya university uh, professor devedi is an eminent scientist researcher educator diplomat and most importantly a thinker sir what is this blending all about of technology and research with liberal arts which you are uh, impregnating into the apj satya university students well i would like to begin with the education sector per se as you all know that education se sector is the largest in the world employing more than 50 million people and catering to the education of about 1 billion students the challenges that the education sector is facing is is very different and it has never been felt before now these 1 billion students are taught in thousands and thousands of universities and institutions and all follow very different pattern 
Now the need of the R is, in order to make a holistic professional, we need to provide them a new kind of innovative education. APJ Satya University is born out of love and love and passion for the social upliftment. And the key behind this is, is man-making nation building. Uh, at APJ Satya University, we follow a liberal art system of education, where the core is one fourth of all programs mm -hmm. are actually having a core, which is liberal arts. We have 11 tracks and 11 different subjects under which every student has to take about 30 credits at undergraduate level. Okay. Now the purpose of giving this liberal art is um, in order to make students more confident mm -hmm. and able to synthesize various kind of um, approaches to, to solve complex problems. The students are more creative they critically question that whether it is true or not. The students are better communicative. They are more expressive both in written and verbal mode. The students are actually learn to work independently. At the same time, they are an excellent team worker. You know, mm -hmm. it looks opposite to each other, but liberal art does that. Liberal art also actually provide opportunity to students to have confidence on themselves and they actually solve ambiguities in one sentence if I say liberal art actually bring zing mm -hmm. in the personality of students and thereby they are more successful mm -hmm. in their profession at the same time they can be a better entrepreneur uh, as compared to others. So is it something an extension of what they call it as extracurricular, co-curricular in other campuses? Is it something that or what this liberal art education is all about? Uh, no, uh, actually liberal art education is basically termed as a transdisciplinary approach. Mm -hmm. uh, extracurricular or co-curricular activities are actually essential mm -hmm. in, in growing and we have that separate. Okay, okay. We are perhaps the only university which actually gives a credit for the community service. Okay. Every student in my university mm -hmm. has to perform 40 hours of community service mm -hmm. and earn one credit for okay. that. Okay. And without that, the degree is not given. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means that we also give what we call is a Human Value Award, Dr. Satyapal Memorial Human Value Award every year. Mm -hmm. And students are really working hard Mm -hmm. to earn that, uh, that distinction. Mm -hmm. So they are going to villages and work with, with the needy people. And uh, both in terms of, it's, it's not only you know, providing them adult education and that kind of things. They actually nurse them, they serve them, uh, they take children and uh, teach hygiene to mother mm -hmm. because mother is the source mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. the health of the family. Mm -hmm. So all kinds of work they do. They do also distribution through Rotec Club also. Our mm -hmm. students are mm -hmm. working in the village and with the society. So this is the third dimension of the university other than the teaching and research. Mm -hmm. Okay, as you know that the core value is teaching, excellent teaching and, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, cutting-edge research. Our students are involved in undergraduate research as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, we find that our university is different, unique, mm -hmm. and it is actually creating professionals of the highest order. Mm -hmm. So, community service, you said, is one uh, dimension of this liberal arts education. What apart from that, what kind of credits students have to undergo uh, in the liberal arts schema? Uh, as I told you that uh, when a student join our university, uh, theoretically they join the university, not a program. Okay. okay. And our students actually can design their degree mm -hmm. under this system. Okay. And as they grow, they take courses, they enter in electrical engineer and come out as a designer. Okay. Or they can, they can actually, this flexibility is provided in our system. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, we assign them enrollment number, not in terms of faculty and departments. Mm -hmm. We give only the year and thereby they can actually move from any 
department to other department. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you see, uh, we have a core that is a liberal art. Then we have a fundamental courses which other institute IITs are offering. We also have uh, a depth electives and we have open elective system. And we have all the courses which actually compose under a particular degree. Mm -hmm. So they actually do all courses which students in other institution do, plus plus, okay. you know, liberal art, plus uh, you know, advanced electives or open electives and deep electives, and cross disciplinary courses from other faculty. So does it increase their academic load or it, it is increase? Uh... Well, uh, if they complete 120 credit. Okay they are now eligible to have a degree okay. provided that they have completed the requirement of liberal art requirement of um, uh, you know community service requirement of their their uh, we call degree mm -hmm. related programs mm -hmm. 80 credit now students can actually take on an average 15 credit per semester mm -hmm. but they can take extra load okay and they can even end up with 150 or 140 credit okay, okay. now those extra credits are actually mentioned in their transcript mm -hmm. they actually make the student more confident mm -hmm. and more versatile mm -hmm. so we don't restrict a student at 120 credits if they want to take more we allow them to take now if they want to take those extra credit as a postgraduate degree, mm -hmm. let's say if they want to do M.Tech okay. or M.B.A., mm -hmm. we ha they have a chance to actually utilize those extra credit for those degrees. Okay. They can plan out. Okay. So like uh, you must have heard that some universities are going to offer one year postgraduate degree. Mm -hmm. Now this kind of system is built in, in our university that students in five years can, can earn an integrated undergraduate and postgraduate mm -hmm. degree. So this flexibility is there in APJ Satya University, and which is unique. So Indian education system like has been uh, like full of a stratified and a very fixed kind of a system. So what kind of reaction you have seen from the students at large uh, to this flexible kind of a very flexible and open education system? Actually, students are embracing it well. well. Okay. Uh, uh, they are, uh, they are, um, uh, in fact, uh, finding more interest in these kind of courses mm -hmm. uh, because uh, if you have a very rigid system, okay, uh, students are not able to learn as much, and especially their creativity uh, gets hampered. Mm -hmm. If some student is very creative mm -hmm. and open, and can assimilate other things. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you the value of this cross disciplinary courses are it actually enhances mm -hmm. the analytical ability of the mind mm -hmm. and actually do some synthesis and connect the information. Believe me that knowledge pool is one. Mm -hmm. For our own convenience we have divided them into different subjects. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now first we divided now we wanted to integrate it. Okay. Okay. And this liberal art approach or cross disciplinary approach helps students and the flexible model that those universities follow i think in the life their students will be more successful believe me mm -hmm. how is it being taken by the industry in the outside world uh, who pick up the students from the campus i think if you if you think this outside india the entire you know concept of liberal art actually started you know because of the demand of the uni uh, industry mm -hmm. because industries are changing very fast okay and they found that the very the professional which are actually created by a very rigid system mm -hmm. are not very adoptive to change okay mm -hmm. but those who are coming under liberal art mm -hmm. they change very i mean without any problem you know mm -hmm. so smoothly mm -hmm. seamlessly they change mm -hmm. with the changes mm -hmm. so industries actually demand students from liberal art so as far as they are their employability is concerned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think in the changing time, students will get uh, better jobs, mm -hmm. or perhaps they will be preferred over others because they are actually suitable mm -hmm. for changes. So, what in your opinion would be the five major hallmarks of a APJ Satya University graduate coming after a liberal arts uh, uh, training programs? 
Uh, see, first of all, they are professionally competent. Okay. Number two, they are confident. Mm -hmm. Number three, I think they can react uh, positively under given circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, they could be an excellent team worker. Okay. And perhaps they can be a professional leaders. Okay. I mean, these are these are the so the entire gamut of the win-win uh, propositions which any employer would look for I or any entrepreneur has to possess. I think so. Mm -hmm. If 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 let's say if I interview students mm -hmm. for a job in in my organization, I would always prefer a student who has a wide mm -hmm. uh, knowledge, mm -hmm. not simply in in the own field. Because mm -hmm. I, I I tell you that all the, this four-year education. Mm -hmm is actually providing you a platform. Okay. It is not providing you a, 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 a running feeder to your knowledge. Actually, this is just a platform, a launching pad. And if you are more confident, uh, more equipped to changes, I think you can do that. So how differential is this paradigm, uh, what you are trying to implement out here, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Western uh, system per se? How different it is and what more customizations you have done uh, with the Indian ecosystem in place? Yes. Uh, as you all know that we follow uh, the system mm -hmm. in our university, what Stanford uh, okay. in US follow. Mm -hmm. Stanford, or Harvard, uh, or Brown, these are the top universities, the system, their system mm -hmm. is actually taken. Mm -hmm. But it has been, uh, it has been reinforced with the Indian social fabric. Mm -hmm. Because, um, because uh, you see, it suits to the condi Indian conditions and we are actually evolving it. Okay. As you all know that APJ Satya University is just completing four years. Mm -hmm. So our first batch would be coming out okay. and we are learning mm -hmm. uh, while implementing it mm -hmm. and we do a lot of changes mm -hmm. okay. and, uh, and those changes are actually helping us mm -hmm. and our students mm -hmm. in order to pursue uh, mm -hmm. you know, in a much better mm -hmm. and productive way. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we find that, um, I mean we use technology in the class. Okay. We, we are the university who believes in open book exams, surprise mm -hmm. quizzes, okay. take home okay. exams. Mm -hmm. Those kind of innovations we are doing mm -hmm. and we are successfully doing. Mm -hmm. So is this a bit of unassuming, less imposing campus also a part of this uh, thought process? Yes, actually uh, uh, this is a, a very close-knit campus and uh, you walk from any side, mm -hmm. uh, you actually interact. Okay. I mean, you are not going linear in one direction. Mm -hmm. You see the, the structure or the architecture of, of the building, mm -hmm. academic block. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a square mm -hmm. and it has a corridor. Okay. So if you walk from, go from one classroom to another, you, you ought to interact. So it's with being people. championed from all angles, like yeah. from the infrastructure I feel, to... I feel mm -hmm. that in modern days, mm -hmm. some institutions are coming with the glass and granite <laughs> and true, various... True. I mean, I personally don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. I believe in a... In a in a decent structure, mm. uh, which is more conducive mm -hmm. for learning mm -hmm. and interacting mm -hmm. people. And so, moving from the liberal arts aspect of this university, uh, you also talk that you are one of the first meta universities. Uh, it's a term which is very uh, less understood these days. For the sake of our audience, what is this whole concept of meta university all about? Well, uh, you see, meta university is actually, uh, you know, uh, imparting the best possible education mm -hmm. by pooling the resources. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, no single university uh, can actually become in totality a meta university, mm -hmm. but it's a group of universities mm -hmm. and centers. For example, if you are teaching a course on thermodynamics or any other topic, mm -hmm. now the best teacher who can teach mm -hmm. should teach. Yes. Now, how do we do that? Suppose mm -hmm. in my university, we don't have the best teacher in thermodynamics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but in Caltech, there is a one. Okay. And I have a linkages with Caltech, and we arrange those lectures for our students. Okay. Similarly, if in Caltech, 
somebody wants to learn about the Indian design and fashion, mm -hmm. then my faculty will teach that course to the students. So there is an academic interchange which you have ingrained well so into the... This is one. Mm -hmm. The other one is that our faculty and the faculty of our partner, what we call is a consortium of university institutions, mm -hmm. which form a meta concept, mm -hmm. they actually upload they are they are courseware mm -hmm. online okay. for readily available to the our students. Mm -hmm. So that is one. Mm -hmm. There was one university system or one uh, organization called Universitas 21, mm -hmm. which is started group of universities for online sharing of courses. So Meta University means that we should ensure the best education to our students mm. by pooling best of our resources okay in order to make them whether it's a library or mm -hmm. open courseware mm -hmm. or a class lectures or a joint research programs mm -hmm. that we can do mm -hmm. this is all under meta system mm -hmm. and one of the thing in meta university system is that we recognize and credits of each other okay they need to be, these universities also need to be accredited mm -hmm. by international accrediting bodies mm -hmm. and ensure that that the universities you know, is, are equipped to offer the better education. So can you name a couple of universities which are in the APJ Satya uh, Meta University Consortium? Well, uh, you see, um, we have uh, uh, Normandy School of Business in okay. France. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, a Georgia College and State University in mm -hmm. US. We have University of South Florida. Okay. And we are now working very soon mm -hmm. to have a partnership mm -hmm. with the University of uh, South Florida okay. and uh, Edith Coven University in Perth in Australia. Mm -hmm. And many other universities such as um, National University of Singapore mm -hmm. and uh, some universities in Europe and some more in US mm -hmm. are going to join us. Mm -hmm. So that these are the these are the places which are actually believing in liberal art mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. and we are actually finding partners in those. Okay. Uh, so just a last question, like in, in the current age when MOOCs and all kind of online education is taking prominence and there is a lot of furor about it, what do you envisage the future? of a physical campus like APJ Satya University vis-a-vis -vis the online seat of education. What kind of blending uh, you envisage in times to come? I tell you that technology is changing fast and technology is also driving mm -hmm. the education system. Now, one of the core is that students want to learn fast. They don't want to spend much longer time. Mm -hmm. They also wanted to do multitasking. Mm. Okay. Now the university have to really think in those directions. Okay. Now, if I want to have my students here from nine o'clock to five o'clock, okay, in the classroom, students are not so much there, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they wanted to do multitasking. So we have to evolve and develop our education system in such a way that we should find out a very open and flexible learning model mm -hmm. where either students need not to physically come to the campus mm -hmm. to learn mm -hmm. they can even sit wherever they are or a student want to come to the campus for many other things is also allowed like libraries are no longer library mm -hmm. but they are called a resource center mm -hmm. you know where multimedia is mm -hmm. there where internet is there mm -hmm. so you can do everything mm -hmm. similarly the classroom should also be like that mm -hmm. professors should also teach in that way I mean, you, you know that there are some professors who are actually, uh, I would say, develop and design and develop a course and offer online and they register as many as about 100 to 200,000 students mm -hmm. all over the world mm -hmm. and they teach. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a virtual university model. Mm -hmm. So you were envisaging a kind of a mix between a physical campus and an online campus? I think. I think we have to do that way. Okay. I mean, we don't require thousand acres of campus mm -hmm. in order to that classical way. Mm -hmm. There are certain advantage of that, mm -hmm. but but I think people are now thinking very differently. Mm -hmm. They wanted to learn multiple things. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and they want it to be available to them. Mm -hmm. It will not be possible for any university mm -hmm. to physically provide those things. Mm -hmm. But in the meta university, liberal arts system, mm -hmm. open learning systems, mm -hmm. I think these things are possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I cannot exactly predict mm -hmm. where we are going to do, mm -hmm. but we know the path on which we should go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even though the destination is not mm -hmm. reached, because in education you never reach destination, because mm -hmm. education has a beginning mm -hmm. and it has no end. Mm -hmm. So let us not talk about the end. And this is a journey this that is. we have to perform. So this is a journey uh, with Professor Kamal Khan Divedi is treading all the way at APJ Satya University. Uh, a constant learner even at this grand age and learning from the experiments which are being conducted out here. Uh, so I think that the liberal arts DNA, the central pivot around which the entire curriculum at this uh, meta university has been designed uh, would have really exciting departments and courses and careers for the students coming out here. We will move on to the next destination in this campus walk of ours. So stay tuned. Uh, you would be quite surprised that uh, on our background we have all the natural scenic locations at this APJ Satya University. So the openness and the flexibility which the education system out here which offers is something which we want to exhibit by interviewing some of the senior academic leaders on such open scenic locations. Uh, we have with us uh, Professor Sarabjit Singh who is the Dean of the uh, School of Engineering and Technology at the APJ Satya University. A man of versatile personality who has devoted a sizable fraction of his career in the core of signals in defense research, uh, a telecom engineer uh, from the illustrious Punjab Engineering College. Uh, Professor Sarabjit Singh uh, would be illumining us more about as to how this liberal art paradigm has been uh, indoctrinated into the whole curriculum of the stratified system of engineering and technology. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so what is this? Uh, how have you been able to uh, indoctrinate this liberal arts paradigm into the whole uh, curriculum of engineering and technology? The liberal art is an approach where we integrate many technologies and management techniques into one mm -hmm. in a holistic manner. So liberal art per se is nothing to do with arts. Mm -hmm. So in engineering with various disciplines, mm -hmm. the first thing we have done is uh, integrating department within itself. For example, Department of Electronics and Telecommunication, mm -hmm. Department of Electronic and Instrumentation, mm -hmm. Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering okay. System okay. has been clubbed into one, okay. wherein they get automatically integrated. Mm -hmm. Beside this, our is a holistic approach that engineering by itself is a technical thing, mm -hmm. but we bring management techniques. Mm -hmm. So it's a transdisciplinary activity, mm -hmm. and for that we have a design innovation center. Mm -hmm. Aim is to teach beyond the scope. Mm -hmm. Liberal art means liberty. Mm -hmm. You can evolve something collectively, mm -hmm. and you can fructify your idea in the form of a product, mm -hmm. which is usable, mm -hmm. which is appreciated, mm -hmm. uh, builds the economy, mm -hmm. nation building, mm -hmm. and make engineers more mm -hmm. productive and mm -hmm. highly employable. So what does this liberal approach entails in terms of academic delivery over the four years? What, how a student entering into the campus, APJ Satya University, finds a program in a particular department different from other places? Yeah. It has three distinct features. Number one, the curriculum is developed mm -hmm are evolved. It is not picked up. We evolve our curriculum based on to the lead university like Stanford, uh, MIT, and we have taken even Virginia and Tech. Mm -hmm. We have even gone to Western University of Western Australia. Mm -hmm. So we pick out of that and see how we can deliver that. So curriculum is flexible, student-centric, and faculty delivered. Mm -hmm. Students can pick up their own pace. People do not have to register for six subjects in every semester. Mm -hmm. They can pick up three, four, five. Okay. And a subject of second semester may be done in the fourth semester, and a subject fifth semester could be done in third semester. Mm -hmm. So you have your own pace of picking up subject to covering the program. Mm -hmm. In addition, liberal approach means we are going beyond the scope. Mm -hmm. We do not limit to the syllabus. Mm -hmm. A teacher can teach beyond 
if they can see something new emerging, mm -hmm. maybe nanotechnology, maybe telecom, mm -hmm. maybe mobile communication, maybe satellite, it is dovetail immediately, maybe within a week or even two weeks or one month, mm -hmm. but it is introduced. Mm -hmm. The syllabus remains progressively evolving and growing. Another thing we bring in the transdisciplinary approach is mandatory that every engineer must do at least four programs worth 10 credits outside the department okay. or outside the school per se. Mm -hmm. But within itself, the practical part that being we have a, a training of nine months mm -hmm. where they do practical projects, six months in the last semester and three months is done in two parts after second year and third year. Mm -hmm. In all the students are encouraged to pick up project which are interdependent. Mm -hmm. A mechanical engineering student may be picking up something jointly with electronics which you call mechatronics. He may be dealing with a metro rail okay. a project mm -hmm. which entails instrumentation control which entails even civil engineering mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So therefore we have a flexible approach which is ongoing mm -hmm. and there's no limit. Another peculiarity we have the student for first year itself mm -hmm. can start doing research along with seniors, mm -hmm. along with faculty. Okay. We get a very good distinct example a student from computer science of first year, second semester, joins hand with a sixth semester student and together they develop something uh, to help the impaired, partly impaired vision by using Google application, using artificial intelligence. It brings out the students are whether M-Tech or B-Tech or faculty, they work as a cohesive team. Mm -hmm. And that builds them a confidence mm -hmm. and they make them research oriented mm -hmm. and technology excited. Mm -hmm. uh, so just an uh, intriguing question perhaps like uh, your vast experience from the defense which is considered to be quite stratified and protocol ridden. How much of this innovation and innovative techniques coming from that background of yours? Well, I have done more than three decades in the uh, telecom and I happen to be the director of SATCOM, mm -hmm. I'm the director of telecom and I'm the founder director of Wargame in Defense. So, a lot of simulation we do there mm -hmm. and over here, a lot of project management we do. Mm -hmm. So, here when we teach software project management, our quality control, they are integral to the defense because the critical systems have zero tolerance. You mm -hmm. can't accept mm -hmm. failure. Mm -hmm. So when we teach, or my faculty, which we groom them to teach, mm -hmm. they teach from experience, mm -hmm. from real life utilization, and not parametric uh, evaluation, if, which is from the book, mm -hmm. which is already proven algorithm. Mm -hmm. So from defense, for example, I have worked with Isle India on a very critical system, which is called pipeline system mm -hmm. in SM. Mm -hmm. It is telemetry control. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a combination of mechanical engineering, civil engineering and telecom. So when I have gone through this as a chief dispatcher, Noonmati Gohati, mm -hmm. so I carry that when I try to guide some project, I bring in those aspects into this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, since I was the director of SATCOM, so communication like radar, communication mm -hmm. like satellite communication, uh, we have been practically in it, mm -hmm. uh, evolving. I happen to work with great people like Professor Yuva Rao mm -hmm. of ISRO, mm -hmm. then I worked with people from SAC Ahmedabad. So that gives you confidence and we try to share that knowledge and mm -hmm. pass it on. So in a nutshell, can we understand that a sheer focus on the real life aspects of engineering and technology drives the educational curriculum at APJ Satya University? We will, uh, you're right. But we add to that, like mechanical engineering in this institution mm -hmm. is a mechanical engineering and product design. Mm -hmm. We do not do mechanical design whether of a vehicle mm -hmm. or a fan or a refrigerator mm -hmm. or even a pillar or mm -hmm. a building per se. That mm -hmm. will be there always mm -hmm. for efficiency, mm -hmm. suitability, endurance. But we also bring in the product design concept, mm -hmm. the look and feel, the comfort, mm -hmm. the space, mm -hmm. that makes this added value. Mm -hmm. So we are, for example, energy, 
energy can be bifurcated into electrical energy, thermal energy, nuclear energy. But when we integrate, mm -hmm. we teach grid management where mm -hmm. we have many sources of energy mm -hmm. bringing into one mm -hmm. so that we have optimal utilization. So integrationist and comprehensive approach are probably the hallmarks of this liberal arts paradigm which is being pursued at APJ Satya University. We would be moving on to different centers of innovation and departments in our next stopover. Uh, till then, stay tuned. We are now here at the e-governance cell at the APJ Satya University. Uh, Professor Singh, what is this cell all about? Uh, we are, there were 100 institutions which was recognized by you all over India for e-governance. And we happen to be the f top 23. Mm -hmm. And now we are the top 13 mm -hmm. uh, in e-governance. The word is e-governance campus. Mm -hmm. Even before you assign the task to us, we have introduced ICT, our techniques of electronics to govern the university campus per se. First is the academic program. In this we have, firstly is the academic content. Mm -hmm. The faculty prepare the contents, put it using Moodle is the mm -hmm. free software um, f available open source mm -hmm. and this is enabled, web enabled, available to the student. Mm -hmm. So the complete curriculum, that means the structure of the program, the content, the weekly delivery lecture, assignment, marks, uh, in respect of every teacher who may be doing two to three subject, it is on the web. It is so the, so the entire IT support is provided by this cell? The, it is structured, it is supported by this cell. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we have a very good system as you ask, which way we track the student is doing the right track, is filling the right course. Mm -hmm. So we have a system where the registration, we call them actually uh, marketing, mm -hmm. uh, what they call um, what the shopping. A student can shop okay. or select a subject of his or her choice mm -hmm. depending upon he or she likes a particular professor or not. So it's a my plan of Airtel kind of a scheme. Are you? Yeah. Okay. So you choose, uh, you may be offering a course and you are a wonderful person, so I will register for you. Mm -hmm. But another time probably Sudhakar is offering a course, I say no, 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 he's a very serious man. I will take the next semester. Mm -hmm. But in that the system builds in which course he has taken, what she should have taken. Mm -hmm. He has registered seven or five, minimum should have been three, mm -hmm. maximum should have been six. Mm -hmm. Which one he has now, what is the gap analysis? Mm -hmm. What stage of the mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. four year, where is the student mm -hmm. is now? Mm -hmm. Which are the prerequisite, has he done those or not? Mm -hmm. If not done, he can't do a particular subject. Mm -hmm. And there can be chain of prerequisite. Mm -hmm. So this system helps mm -hmm. at the time of shopping, mm -hmm. our registration, mm -hmm. that the students pick up the right subject mm -hmm. at the right time, mm -hmm. so that they achieve. Mm -hmm. so it also takes care of which subject he's doing additional. Mm -hmm. There's a minimum requirement, mm -hmm. and he can go maximum. He can enhance. Mm -hmm. So there we have a credit system and audit system. Student can do his own academic improvement. Mm -hmm. He knows the grade mm -hmm. and he can re-register to improve the grade. So apart from providing the IT support for the uh, LMS based systems, what all this e-governance cell does? E-governance cell does, this is the academic part. Then there's the administration part, mm -hmm. which is hostel management, okay. which are other facilities like power, mm -hmm. electricity, water. And in administration, we do include the fee collection. Student mm -hmm. has paid the fee. When did he register? What is the fee due? Mm -hmm. He has not paid. So do you develop certain applications out there for managing that? We are developing at the moment. It's not fully integrated. Okay. Moodle is integrated by itself. It's on the cards. It's, it's being done. It is being done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moodle is already operational mm -hmm. for the last about four years now. Mm -hmm. But other uh, uh, standalone, mm -hmm. they are being integrated in system. Mm -hmm. So we have a valuation system, mm -hmm. which will be continuous valuation mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. So in e-governance, our another momentum which we have given jointly with the University of Western Australia, mm -hmm. it is called Engineers Without Border, which you mm -hmm. must be knowing. Mm -hmm. We are a very active member into mm -hmm. that. The focus is use of technology for upliftment of the ruler masses. Mm -hmm. So therein we try to track the data of about selected five villages, mm -hmm. similar government school, mm -hmm. see the demographic data, mm -hmm. the performance data, mm -hmm. and 
trying to guide. Uh, we have also with us uh, Professor Mamta Dahiya, who is the co uh, faculty coordinator of the SIGAF cell. Uh, Ma'am, how the students are being deployed? Uh, which uh, year and which department students are working at the SIGAF cell out here? Actually, we're talking about like the beginning of the scenario. So, like we take like in general student enrollments all the time in there in different model. Like one is the academic system, what we are talking about. Second, what we are doing, like how the technology is useful for the rural development, and another is part like m the services provided by the engineering watch. That is the third part. Basically, before that, we're already working with mm -hmm. the e-governance things. So after that, like now we do have a formal channel to enrollment of the students here. Mm -hmm. So earlier we asked like uh, as per to their interest. Mm -hmm. So almost. This time we have more than like 25 students already enrolled okay. with the e-garden okay. cells, and uh, we already have the four different year-wise coordinators. Mm -hmm. So even uh, the coordinators are assigned only based on their presentation, their interest, and mm -hmm. what kind of the like different uh, parts. We are seeing things. some students out here. Can we yeah. have their views as well? Uh, uh, what's your name? Shitaj Kumar Singh. Shitaj, yeah. which uh, department in uh, which year? CEC department, fourth semester. Fourth semester. Yeah. Okay. So you are a member of this e-gov cell. So what what drove you to this cell? I just wanted to be a part of something like it's a uh, it it no, no it is it wants it something different mm -hmm. like from the traditional things. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to be there. So what all you have been assigned so far, and what do you th feel for the next semesters? What you will be doing here? Yeah, we students are assigned um, banking sector currently. Mm -hmm. So we are given some bank. Like our team is uh, given responsibility for the bank of Central Bank of India, mm -hmm. and we are required to go and take out a survey and. Uh, do know make it some like uh, introduce new systems mm -hmm. like so you're understanding the banking MMP yeah. under the national e governance program yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, as far as our own campus is concerned mm -hmm. we are working on a module uh, like um, in uh, attendance module mm -hmm. making it electronic uh, mm -hmm. based on electronic system that's mm -hmm. what we are doing currently mm -hmm. So, so how different you are finding it from your regular curriculum? You do have a very liberal kind of a university, but in that university, how the Seagull uh, cell is helping you? Yeah, of course, it's different. Like, uh, you know, we'll uh, get we have we all have different ideas. You know, this is a platform. This is something we can bring it outside mm -hmm. and do things. So mm -hmm. that is why I find it useful and why I'm here. Uh, so this was the Eagle cell at the APJ Satya University. True to its uh, commitment to liberal arts and the openness and flexibility uh, to the entire academic curriculum, they have they are trying very hard to integrate the e-governance of their entire campus into this cell. And we can see from the uh, from the random sampling of the students that they are also quite excited about the task and assignments which they are being exposed to at certain early age. Uh, so we will move on to the next destination in this campus work of ours. So the entire uh, spirit of liberal education at APJ Satya is really unfolding in a astounding fashion. So we are here at the Design and Innovation Center at APJ Satya University. We are standing in the prototyping and project display lab. Uh, there are two other laboratories uh, assigned to this uh, Design and Innovation Center. We have with us Professor Vashisht, uh, who is the coordinator of this uh, Design and Innovation Center. So what is Design and Innovation Center all about? Look, design and innovation, this is the time for innovation like we have earlier decade of for inventions. Now we are here to develop small uh, prototypes that can help the society in much uh, humble way. Mm -hmm. So as a curricular to our students, we uh, encourage them what they study, they should apply them practically. Mm -hmm. Like engineer, our job of engineers is to build things from the theoretical concepts mm -hmm. of the books. So here they all practice all the concepts which they have learned in mm -hmm. their classes. And so there are some of the projects which we can show you mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. shows the fundamentals mm -hmm. and the behavior and the, they solve small, small applications and they are prototypes mm -hmm. and which helps in the normal social society. So is there some definitive direction of design and innovation or is it is all uh, whatever comes to the students and you just uh, support it? Like what the, like uh, if we talk of our branch like electronics and communication, it, uh, it deals with the automation of anything. Okay. okay. So now Nowadays, electronics is so common in the each areas. Like mm -hmm. even this, this mic or a video camera is all mm -hmm. electronics based. So, what so all three innovations this center has done in the field of automation? Yeah. Just to first of all, we have developed a gesture control robo, which is a latest technology called Six Sense technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our uh, students are right now uh, uh, working on GPS enabled RFID devices for women security, mm -hmm. and we have one more project. 
which is related to laser communication. Mm -hmm. Like we are transmitting audio waves through laser communication mm -hmm. channel. Mm -hmm. And there are like more, we have uh, automated mm -hmm. control, remotely mm -hmm. control household works. And what next, like uh, as a part of the curriculum to evoke the sense of innovation among the students <coughs> is one good objective. But since you have named this lab, particular lab is prototyping, and project display lab. So do you plan to take some of these projects on a commercial basis or exploiting it in the uh, on that plane? Obviously we do encourage entrepreneurship like so students here keeps on working on new and innovative ideas like uh, people are working on thermoelectric generators, green refrigerators of mm -hmm. faculty are, and they are also involving the students mm -hmm. which can uh, lead to the entrepreneurship they can mm -hmm. start a new venture with that only mm -hmm. because since these technologies are very new to the world mm -hmm. and it is a conventional system and leads to green ways like non-conventional energy sources mm -hmm. people are also working here in the field of WSN wireless sensors networks mm -hmm. and all so, so, so what is the kind of mix between applied innovation and the cutting edge kind of an innovation? What kind of uh, strategic mix you put it out See, uh, most of the time they go hand in hand basically. Mm -hmm. But the cutting edge innovation will be the innovation which is uh, bringing a new idea, new perspective to the existing mm -hmm. technologies. Mm -hmm. So students here are and we are developing the trend into the students that they keep innovating and they mm -hmm. keep the, doing the simple things a different way mm -hmm. which uh, broadens their spectrum. Mm -hmm. and also leads them to mm -hmm. explore new worlds mm -hmm. like they go beyond mm -hmm. the measuring any effort is quite important what kind of uh, efforts you are putting in to really quantize and measure the impact of such drives uh, that is what that some is kind of ip protection uh, patents or trademarks have you filed from this institution uh, right now like our university in the building stage is only it is too young to file a patent for it okay. unless nl5 we find a very good sponsor for it mm -hmm. otherwise like we know that key to keep our patient patent we need to have a processing fee year and mm -hmm. year round mm -hmm. so we develop the uh, contents and projects in the name of uh, the new face or cutting edge technologies mm -hmm. like and the of course the student can go to out and reach out to the industries mm -hmm. and if we got a good sponsor mm -hmm. we'll, we will surely be filing a patent mm -hmm. there uh, this is really exciting we have certain students uh, displaying some of their key projects uh, name, uh, uh, name please Alkarani. Uh, which department? B Tech. EC. Electronics and Communication. Third year. Okay. So, what this project is all about, would you just like to share with us? Uh, this is wireless control window. Uh, it is uh, used uh, through a remote over there. Mm -hmm. We can uh, we can sit anywhere in the room and we can control the uh, roof uh, window of our house. Mm -hmm. It's an eco-friendly uh, mm -hmm. project. And this is a hand gesture robot. Mm -hmm. uh, you can sit anywhere in your room and control your robot mm -hmm. at any place. You just need to know the path. Mm -hmm. And through that path, you can control uh, your uh, robot anywhere at mm -hmm. any place. You did this as a part of a, a subject or as a part of a laboratory project work or what? Uh, it's a project. It's a laboratory project. Uh, we have given a project according to our subjects. So it was chosen by you or given by your faculty member? By me only. Okay, what, what drove you to this particular problem? What What is specific about this design per se? Uh, it's for the comfort of the public. Like we all know that uh, innovation is going on, going on, going on. And people try to stay uh, set and they want uh, someone else to do their work. Mm -hmm. So it's a robot who will help you sitting at your place and mm -hmm. it will do your work at far distance away from you. So going up, uh, after from this university, like what implications you are seeing of this innovation of yours? How is going to help this experience of yours in what industry? Uh, how do you see the commercial linkages of project work like this? Uh, we can develop these things more and more in our industry pr purpose like uh, like in future we can work more on it and we can t uh, turn it into more automobile and uh, work thing like you sit at uh, one place and you can work at any place on your like you are sitting in your office and mm -hmm. you can make it work on road and it can also help you in uh, like uh, avoiding accidents like thing one can uh, sit uh, at home and uh, a police it can help in police work also mm -hmm. so you can sit at your uh, station and your work will be done at your uh, uh, traffic path and your four way mm -hmm. path like mm -hmm. things so this is quite interesting the students out here are uh, really dedicated to bring about some change on some applied or innovative problem uh, we were at the prototyping and project display laboratory in the design uh, in the center for design and innovation at epg satya university we'll move on to the next laboratory uh, associated with this center uh, and understand as to what all is happening in those other laboratories
now we move on to the next section that is software and simulating lab okay so Uh, we are now here at a facility called the software simulation laboratory uh, popularly known as the simulink uh, it works under the uh, center for design and innovation at the apj satya university uh, uh, we have with us uh, professor ekta bhayana and professor kavita singh uh, ma'am uh, we would like to know that what this lab is all about basically this is the uh, this labs comes under the dice basically design and innovation center where the students going to make the prototyping they'll uh, basically done the simulation here uh, it's very difficult to make the hardware uh, i mean we are uh, it's very difficult to see the output waveforms in the hardware system mm -hmm. so we support the software system they can drag and drop the components various type of components and changing the outputs inputs of that particular devices mm -hmm. and see the output waveform changing in that mm -hmm. case so they'll be actually doing the research on that particular system basically and after getting the proper result they'll uh, make that the prototyping done Uh, so what kind of students like uh, which year or which branch this lab is actually integrated to in the conventional thought of it so it's not that uh, it's like basically there's no bar for the age group and for mm -hmm. the semester system any of the semester student say it's, it could be first year student second year third year they can come here and do the research work because the research work is like laboratory based mm -hmm. if they are teach if i'm uh, teaching them user interface for the first semester first mm -hmm. year so they will be coming here and developing some user user interface projects okay. they'll be doing it prototyping here uh, with the simulation and then uh, the hardware part done in the other lab so it's a non stratified kind of a, a simulation facility for driving innovation out here uh, ma'am what kind of projects uh, this lab is actually pursuing and simulating out here okay here there are there are three types of software available matlab or cad matlab in matlab we design the fuzzy controller based projects pid controller projects one project is running uh, you can see uh, my student is design a washing machine mm -hmm. automatic washing machine and one uh, student has designed the speed controller of fan speed controller mm -hmm. is a very good uh, project Uh, you can see there mm -hmm. and uh, first year student can uh, design a small projects depends upon the he, he can drag the simulating libraries uh, he, he can drag the controllers he can drag the filters and design the on filters mm -hmm. depends on the requirement mm -hmm. yeah uh, some student has designed the digital filter also it's uh, it's give a very wonderful results after that they fabricate the final design so what kind of time frames are available for the students to work in this uh, laboratory and facility time frame for given actually whenever there be free, free they can come in this lab and work there okay that's the option given to them mm -hmm. any time this lab is open for mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. any of the departments like computer science uh, mechanical students mm -hmm. ece students they can come er, any they can uh, design the project interdisciplinary you know mm -hmm. if the mechanical one student from the mechanical one from the computer science and one from the electronics mm -hmm. wants to develop something new mm -hmm. so they can come here and sit together mm -hmm. and doing the brainstorming with each other and then then decide because one stream cannot design one project mm -hmm. you know there's mm -hmm. a, a streams uh, available But, uh, so this is how you are uh, interfacing uh, the various disciplines out here uh, how how come the effort of the students is mapped to their academic credits which are quite important in terms of the transcripts and all uh, how the effort from this laboratory is mapped to their transcripts in each subject they have to design a one product depends on the subject okay okay uh, and the project is credit according to effort see if okay, it, okay, it is okay. three, three credit codes there is a lab combined with that mm -hmm. so three credit course uh, the partially per credits given to mm -hmm. the particular lab mm -hmm. so if they are developing something new good mm -hmm. and workable yeah. projects mm -hmm. so we'll be giving the credit for that particular mm -hmm. system so that is how this is working uh, we have some students also sitting out here and working uh, let's uh, interact with some of them uh, uh, may i know your name please uh, shreya uh, which department in which year you are uh, I am in uh, second year, fourth semester, and EC okay. electronics. Okay. So what are you doing in this laboratory? Uh, I just want to. I am doing my project uh, on the AutoCAD. 
and it's basically it's I am using AutoCAD. It's basically 16.3 version, mm -hmm. and so we are doing the software part, software simulation part, like uh, before implementation on on any hardware. Like in the software, we used to make the designs like in half in hardware. The values is very f the value is fixed. It's very hard to uh, it's very hard to change the values. Like in hardware, we have to change the value of resistance mm -hmm. on the basis of my projects. The values like one kilo. So it's very difficult like soldering part we mm -hmm. have to do. So it's very easy on AutoCAD which is mm -hmm. a software tool. Mm -hmm. We can easily change the values mm -hmm. by just dragging, double clicking. So how much time do you spend a week in this laboratory? How exciting you find whenever, that? Whenever I use, when, whenever I free I used to uh, mm -hmm. do my projects mm -hmm. on the on the software. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I used to come every day, I used to spend one and a half hour uh, here mm -hmm. on uh, doing my projects. Mm -hmm. on how exciting you find this laboratory in your academic uh, journey? Sir, this laboratory is important uh, be because uh, we we can't directly imply our thoughts on the hardware mm -hmm. uh, first we do software so uh, we can save our time and components mm -hmm. also so how much time do you spend out here uh, sir whenever i I'm, I'm free i used to come here and mm -hmm. do the mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. uh, so we find that uh, students are quite taking advantage of this integrationist and uh, uh, open ended kind of a laboratory system which is uh, uh, anytime the students can enter and uh, they can work over there, it's not very stratified. Uh, so I think this kind of an open learning ecosystem is the first step uh, to deliver certain innovative products or interventions. Uh, we will move on to the next laboratory under the Design and Innovation Center at APJ Satya University to unravel further as to what innovation and design is uh, embedded into the whole uh, academic ecosystem out here. Uh, we are at the Testing and Measurements Laboratory, which is attached to the Center for Design and Innovation at APJ Satya University. Uh, I have with me Professor Ranjana Arora, who would explain in greater detail as to what this laboratory is all about. Ma'am, would you like to elevate minus? Yeah, you are here in the Testing and Measurement Laboratory of Design and Innovation Center of uh, APJ Satya University. Like you can see here, we have students which are which are working on the live projects. So what actually our university is making a difference is the students of second year, first year, third year, they're actually working on projects, they get hands-on experience. Like in our conventional education, we were having only the verification and validation of experiments. But now students, when they ha validate the experiments, they apply actually on the practical applications mm -hmm. and these applications are very useful for society mm -hmm. so we are actually adding innovation to mm -hmm. the education system that, that and that is the motto of our, of our APJ mm -hmm. Satya University is liberal arts so this this laboratory is an add-on to the existing uh, academic laboratories which are uh, attached with every course curriculum exactly exactly mm -hmm. like you can see we have conventional experiments also mm -hmm. this is amplitude modulation mm -hmm. this is frequency modulation and all other experiments mm -hmm. we have kits for that so once the students they finish out all the experiments then they carry out the practical exposure to the projects so the normal academic load of a laboratory is not here no. it's only for the innovation out here Plus, no, it's it's a value-added service to that. Okay. Like we carry out the experiments, plus we carry out the practical work. Mm -hmm. So it's it's an uh, you know add-on experience mm -hmm. on the ha which which is a hands-on experience mm -hmm. for students. So these innovative ideas, when they actually perform these innovative ideas on breadboard PCBs, so they come to know what kind of problems they come across, mm -hmm. what new thing can be added. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of a research mm -hmm. or uh, you can say an innovation mm -hmm. which adds a great benefit to the society. What kind of projects have you developed out here? What kind of uh, real-life problems has been addressed? Like, uh, this, uh, this is a very small project developed by the second year students. What they have done, they have uh, actually developed a charger. Can we come a bit closer? Yeah. Hmm. This is actually a mobile charger. Okay. And uh, not practically applying a mobile charger, they have applied a battery, small mm -hmm. battery, mobile battery, and they are charging it through a U uh, USB port from laptop. Mm -hmm. Fine. So now, uh, when the mobile gets charged, completely charged. This particular uh, particular LED, it shows that now stop charging. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your circuit get overcharged mm -hmm. and it might get some fault. And plus, this particular uh, uh, battery is applied for the practical application of this white LED. Mm -hmm. Like white LED is very uh, power efficient LED, mm -hmm. which gives us very much glow. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very. So what's uh, unique about it? It's innovative, or it's just applied. A demonstration of how a mobile charger works. No, it's uh, it, it they have applied 
like they have practically implicated the mobile charger mm -hmm. plus the innovation they have added is instead of using the conventional lighting illumination they have used this white leds which are very power efficient mm -hmm. so power saving mm -hmm. Plus mm -hmm. uh, the mobile charging, mm -hmm. so simultaneously both the works are being done over here. Mm -hmm. Fine. So the very, very, very basic step of unraveling the day-to-day -day usage of electronics and measuring it is something quite innovative. And on top of it, you will be building up more applications. Exactly. Uh, so here we were at the testing and the measurement laboratory attached to the Center for Design and Innovation at APJ Satya University. Uh, the university has taken the real first firm steps in evoking innovations by enabling students uh, to learn and experiment and play in an open liberal environment because that is where the innovations of the next age would emerge and uh, uh, will bring laurels to the country as a whole. Uh, so we will move on to the next destination in this campus works of ours. Uh, till then stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to see liberal arts unraveling in a real uh, space, so probably you have to visit the Mechanical Engineering Laboratory Complex at APJ Satya University. Uh, you can see at my back the whole laboratory complex and this complex is housing around 17 laboratories, uh, uh, I have been told. Uh, I would request Professor Sarabjit Singh to explain more about uh, this design, this seamless, boundaryless design of encapsulating around 17 laboratories in one complex. What has been the purpose and design behind, uh, sir? As we have been talking about the integrated approach in engineering, we have integrated laboratories, wherein we have 11 laboratories of mechanical engineering, and we have six of civil engineering, mm -hmm. all housed in one. Mm -hmm. They are functionally deployed and redeployed, repositioned as per the curriculum. There is no fixed boundary and fixed location with occupancy of the room mm -hmm. or the equipment is much less. Mm -hmm. To have maximum utilization, equipment and the resources which is as per the curriculum in use, mm -hmm. those are located in the middle and people have a more workspace, uh, optimal use. Mm -hmm. Equipment which is not currently used in that particular semester is kept aside. Mm -hmm. We also have a facility of flexible cable drop-down facility from the roof mm -hmm. that we have a bay running where the cable will be running and you can pull the cable mm -hmm. down and have a connectivity. Mm -hmm. Since civil engineering and mechanical engineering have more than five labs which are common to them, like floor mechanics, mm -hmm. there, strength of material is there. Mm -hmm. They are already co-located. Mm -hmm. So when a student comes from one department, they could be doing a product or a project uh, jointly mm -hmm. and as I mentioned earlier we do not believe in lab measurements and validation of the known values mm -hmm. or formulas mm -hmm. is rather to develop and produce something new as a product as a service as a facility mm -hmm. that can only be done if people work together mm -hmm. on a joint feature. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We have with us Brigadier Nambiar who looks after uh, this entire uh, laboratory complex. Uh, sir, what has been the experience of the students in functioning in such an open env environment? Uh, the basic thing is right from the first year when the f f fresh student comes into either the mechanical engineering or the civil engineering uh, departments, the foundations are best established uh, in an environment like this, starting with strength of materials, mm -hmm. workshop technology, the workshop is just behind this bay, when basic machines they are uh, introduced to. And then here they start off with strength of materials, move on to heat transfer, mm -hmm. and as they graduate from the first year to the mm -hmm. second year, for the uh, subjects like the fluid mechanics, the fluid machines, mm -hmm. IC engines, and then we have a refrigeration air condition, all of them graduating in a step-by-step -step manner. So this open design helps them to decompartmentalize knowledge in their minds? It uh, opens up avenues. When somebody is uh, working on the uh, ultimate uh, te test of the UTS here, he's also seeing the torsion testing next door. Mm -hmm. His inquisitiveness comes in. You know, he okay. is uh, thing to query, what is this stuff all about? So it opens up. So he's able to link up his knowledge right from his first year to the first, final first year. year too. So by the time a boy, in the first year itself, he mm -hmm. visualizes what he has mm -hmm. 
ahead of him mm-hmm. so he prepares himself accordingly mm-hmm. he gains knowledge mm-hmm. so in a regulatory regime uh, where the laboratory dimensions formulate a key component in the accreditation or acceptance of a college that how many square feet of a laboratory space you have got uh, how do you think that this design can be taken across by the other engineering colleges this innovative approach of coercing everything uh, into what one. professor our principal professor sarjit just mentioned earlier like there are common labs to both uh, civil as well as mechanical say strength of materials mm-hmm. or say fluid machines or fluid mechanics mm-hmm. so by in what you call uh, having a common lab you are saved on that much space otherwise mm-hmm. as per the norms you would have to have so many square meters for mm-hmm. separate lab separate this thing and then it would be compartmentalizing and you know mm-hmm. uh, even going into isolation whereas mm-hmm. here and there is a bonding and there is a so it remains to be seen that how much of this harakiri can be accepted by the regulators as a whole we have with us professor bindra who looks after the product design uh, professor bindal uh, who looks after the product design uh, over here uh, sir what kind of product development you are able to uh, accentuate in an open experimental environment like this see this is our mechanics lab here and uh, we uh, first of all learn the basics of mechanics how things work out mm-hmm. how the forces are acting in a envir- uh, in machine element and how those forces are generating the power transfers mm-hmm. and how the elements fail under different conditions mm-hmm. and uh, what are the tensile stresses mm-hmm. compressive stresses or mm-hmm. torsion stresses or how much power a uh, water flowing through a conduit will pro, uh, mm-hmm. generate in a turbine mm-hmm. or uh, how much uh, heat will be dissipating mm-hmm. in a heat transfer arrangement mm-hmm. and how that will affect the efficiency of an engine mm-hmm. so all these parameters which we learn in uh, mechanics and applied uh, you know experimental sciences uh, we can accommodate them and take that learning into the design of new products mm-hmm. a better products mm-hmm. you know we can simulate those results mm-hmm. right on the our computers mm-hmm. and then uh, we can always iterate upon them again and again to optimize mm-hmm. the performance of our product so how close is this learning environment uh, to a real working environment probably in the industry how close is this this is very very close you know mm-hmm. uh, because uh, we we are taking up a applied approach mm-hmm. what we are learning here we are improving upon them in our cad labs mm-hmm. we are designing new products okay. so that is the same thing which is happening in the industry mm-hmm. uh, you know in conventional environment mm-hmm. uh, students don't have the flexibility to do their own things mm-hmm. here we promote them mm-hmm. to do their own you know mm-hmm. experiments mm-hmm. Uh, small things they can learn over here they can apply immediately mm-hmm. there and mm-hmm. uh, you know so what kind of product development work has happened in this uh, workshop as it is we have not uh, been able to develop a complete you know product workable product but those experiences which students have gathered over here mm-hmm. they will be very useful uh, for them to apply in future mm-hmm. to really develop something useful mm-hmm. because uh, the time required to have a real time product development mm-hmm. uh, it, it is a exhaustive effort okay and a, a btech student uh, is seldom able to mm-hmm. generate that kind of attention mm-hmm. on one aspect of a thing mm-hmm. uh, you have a very innovative center for design and innovation where we covered the three laboratories under it so uh, has this workshop got to do anything or something with that uh, design and innovation center uh, see uh, when we develop a product okay we need to test its uh, structural strength mm-hmm. it should be able to withstand those forces which are uh, applied upon it mm-hmm. while working mm-hmm. so here in on this apparatus as we see here it mm-hmm. is a uts testing machine mm-hmm. so we can apply that load over here mm-hmm. on that component which we have designed mm-hmm. say we design a component we manufacture it in our workshop mm-hmm. machine it mm-hmm. then we we can apply that there on that machine mm-hmm. and uh, we can apply forces and we can test uh, how much uh, force it is going to withstand mm-hmm. so all these things are going to add up Mm-hmm. Uh, so here, what we saw is a real innovative intervention by coalescing the 17 odd laboratories into one seamless, 
uh, structure uh, which has better control better management and most importantly the organization of the laboratory equipment has been done thematically and as professor uh, brigadier nambia talked that the knowledge compartments which we at times in our educative space gather uh, gets diminished and a seamless knowledge uh, gets created in a student's framework and uh, uh, the interlinking between the various years and semesters and courses it happens on its own so we really saw that a liberal arts approach in the real working as to how that approach has unraveled into the design of this fantastic workshop uh, which i think is a, a model which uh, engineering colleges across the country should try to emulate and the regulators at large should uh, give some credence and some uh, consideration to this uh, integrationist approach uh, which uh, reduces a lot of administrative hassles a lot of capital investment which at times is not uh, so uh, uh, critical to make and uh, and which really promotes learning to a great great extent uh, we'll move on to the next destination in this campus walk of ours till then stay tuned Uh, we are standing on a very high pedestal just on the entrance of the central library at the APJ Satya University. The very fact that this fantastic stage has been created in front of the library says the importance which has been accorded uh, to the library resource center at the university. Uh, I would ask Professor Sarbjit Singh that what kind of importance you have uh, given to the library resource center in a liberal arts university like yours. Yeah. As we mentioned that we have a continuous teaching learning environments where assessment evaluation is also continuous students have sufficient time to come to library which we call learning resource center they come they do self learn they discuss collaborate and evolve idea solution this library has been augmented with a lot of electronic media mm -hmm. instead of only having paper box there are e books and we have a very rich each student is enabled in Wi-Fi enabled environment to access the e-books from anywhere in the campus, mm -hmm. from the hostel, from mm -hmm. the classroom, mm -hmm. from the corridor. Mm -hmm. Students also have access to this type of environment mm -hmm. on the web from on home. Mm -hmm. They can open the book and see. Mm -hmm. So knowledge, reading the book, e-book and collaborative working is a continuous process. Library gives you that particular environment. Mm -hmm. so we have a very experienced mm -hmm. librarian who is looking after this particular facility. Mm -hmm. So, sir, you have seen the transition of a library, a conventional library to a learning resource center. So, how equipped is your learning resource center in terms of the paraphernalia, the books, uh, the journals and other things are concerned? Sir, so your ASU library is a very rich in uh, printed material as well as we have a very rich collection of e-resources also. So whole library is totally automated. Automated in the sense that uh, we have um, um, online catalog that is a web pack that is we are using a software called Lipsys. So within campus anywhere a student can access the books. He can uh, know what is the location of the book, mm -hmm. uh, how many books are available in the library and what is the status in the library. We have a very good collection of um, online databases also, like we have subscribed Abisco, Emerald for management, IEEE for engineering, and we have the SciFinder also. We are the member of DelNet, that is Developing Library Network, mm -hmm. for the resource sharing, and our students can use British Council Library membership also. Mm -hmm. So in this way, we have um, everything mm -hmm. is in electronic format, mm -hmm. and within campus, mm -hmm. a student can access the whole uh, database or everything. Mm -hmm on their system. What kind of attendance your library attracts? Actually it depends actually. At the time of uh, when we start any semester, mm -hmm. so usually people, students come to take the book when they issue the book in the library and uh, gradually it goes down actually mm -hmm. at the time of examination. Mm -hmm. Because our library um, uh, opens from 9 till 8 in the evening. Mm -hmm. So in all the hostel students also come in the evening. So 
in the evening the attendance is very much mm -hmm. but in the daytime it's maybe mm -hmm. uh, i mean 100 or 200 mm -hmm. something like that so as a librarian who is seeing the sea change in uh, the teaching learning processes which are happening across and libraries are taking a paradigm shift so what all you are doing to attract more and more attendance and stickiness uh, to this learning resource center uh, so uh, look this is not important actually because students are coming to you because mm -hmm. nowadays it is more important that library go should go to the students mm -hmm. actually so that's why we have uh, lots of e-resources mm -hmm. so that the students can access uh, these e-resources on their system. Mm -hmm. You don't have to come to the library. Mm -hmm. Now it is more important to maintain your databases, mm -hmm. online databases, library databases, mm -hmm. update it so that student can get all this information, updated information on their system. What in your opinion uh, will the importance of a physical infrastructure like a library uh, will have when students won't be coming in? What is the need and relevance in the context of a campus-based learning environment? Uh, definitely, the infrastructure is definitely very important actually because right now we our library is totally air conditioned. Mm -hmm. So what uh, we have seen okay, in the summer last time when uh, the library was not air conditioned, the lots of people uh, students avoid coming in the library. Now they are more coming to mm -hmm. the library, mm -hmm. and we are getting more and more databases, more and more systems in the library. So more and more students are coming. so more concentrated and comfortable learning. You are giving an environment for the students uh, to come and participate over. So let's have a walk inside and see whatever infrastructure we have got. Sure. Yeah. So, so here we are standing in the reading section of the central library at APJ Satya University. As you can see yourself that the reading section has been designed so tastefully that students can opt for a very comfortable and concentrated learning out here. As Professor Rajesh told that uh, library is turning more into a, a learning resource center. So this is a place which is quite comfortable and students can come and spend hours of concentrated learning over here and uh, we can see that the library stacks are have been put up in the first floor and the whole uh, reading section is on the ground floor so it gives a very open openness of learning where not a lot of ceilings are not there and uh, so what kind of uh, books and journals we do have in this library actually total we have around 40,000 books in a print form and uh, if we are talking about uh, e-books we have around more than 45,000 books mm -hmm. We have subscribed print form journals, around more than 100 journals are there, magazines and journals. Mm -hmm. And uh, e-books, if we are talking about e-journals, is more than 500 e-journals. Mm -hmm. So students, they can access on their systems. So do you audit a kind of a readership index of the journals or the magazines which are subscribed in the library? Uh, actually, it depends. Actually, we cannot, we don't issue journals and mm -hmm. magazines, but it depends. Actually, uh, uh, if the uh, students read it on it and uh, leave it on the tables, mm -hmm. in the, on this um, uh, statistics, we can count how much journal or magazines is used. Mm -hmm. So, on the basis of that, we renew the journal and magazine for the next mm -hmm. year. In this, this uh, what kind of reading capacity, what, what's the number of students who can be accommodated at one go over here? In one go, on the ground floor, there's the reading room section, around 300 books, can, uh, 300 students can sit, mm -hmm. sit once, and we have some tables, some space on the first floor also. Mm -hmm. So we have a separate multimedia room, mm -hmm. in multimedia room, students can um, browse the system, internet, so there they can, uh, around 50 or 100 students can be mm -hmm. accommodated. Mm -hmm. So overall, if we mm -hmm. talk about at a time, around 500 students can sit mm -hmm. in this library. So when was the last when you saw a over full capacity of this reading section? Actually, uh, <laughs> not daily because... <laughs> Maybe in the month, actually depends on the months also. Mm -hmm. When the new semester starts, maybe in the September, October, it's already totally full. Mm -hmm. Or in the month of August, mm -hmm. September, it's very hot outside. Mm -hmm. So always sit in the library, they read and they discuss <laughs> mm -hmm. this thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, these months, it's all totally full, mm -hmm. even in the multimeter. Mm -hmm. Any specific idea that this library has been uh, kept half open? Like generally, we have not seen uh, two tier buildings having an openness like this. Any peculiar reason of doing it? Uh, no, there's no, I know this is the architecture of this thing. There's no, uh, I okay, mean, okay, specific okay. reason. So this is probably the innate DNA of a liberal arts institution, which has tried to put a seamless uh, structure across learning boards and uh, which, uh, which uh, promotes a lot of integrationist learning and open learning environment where students can see uh, the high ceilings and then they can open up their learning vistas to a great extent. 
so here we were at the central library of the APJ Satya University. Uh, we will move on to the next destination in our campus walks. Till then, stay tuned. CRC. Hey, have you got some international students out here? Uh, we have a lady from Bangladesh. What's your name, ma'am? Ananya Saha. Okay. Uh, what brought you to India and particularly to APJ Satya University? Sir, uh, actually my uh, dream is to read in the abroad. Mm -hmm. In our country, the late, uh, in the ladies' uh, part, they are not uh, all, they are not support all the time to lady become an engineer. Mm -hmm. So I am very much interested uh, to become engineer. Mm -hmm. So APJ gives me a platform to fulfill my dreams. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got a scholarship from Bangladesh mm -hmm. and I got 90% scholarship mm -hmm. above all my SSC and mm -hmm. HSC full marks. So how are you finding your academic journey out here? Uh, sir, uh, this is very good for me mm -hmm. and I am very happy to admit uh, admitted here mm -hmm. and the faculty is so, so very good and I like it. Uh, which uh, uh, department you are pursuing your studies with? Uh, computer Science and Engineering. Which year? First year. Okay, you are a first year student. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, from which country you are, sir? Ang Angola. Angola. Uh, you are studying what? Uh, computer Science. Okay. What brought you to uh, this university or India in particular? Yeah, Indian is very famous in computer science. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one of the best places to study computer science. That is why I chose India. Mm -hmm. So And why APJ Satya University? Yeah, APJ is good because it's liberal arts. Mm -hmm. So I can approach here, get get good skills and um, mm -hmm. um, help my country to grow up. Mm -hmm. What do you expected? Are you getting the same kind of academic rigor? or uh, freedom to learn yes here, here we have freedom to learn so we have all the things all the stuff mm -hmm. the teacher they are very good mm -hmm. they are very good in your mm -hmm. so i um maybe i invite other angola also to come here in APJ to start mm -hmm. they start here mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the weather is very good mm -hmm. yeah what you have been able to make out with the liberal art approach which is pursued out here Yes, I can uh, choose some subject mm -hmm. uh, in my academic subject, mm -hmm. which I, my university required to me. I can choose other mm -hmm. other department, to mm -hmm. like a school of economy, mm -hmm. school of um, mm -hmm. physical education, and mm -hmm. uh, okay, mm -hmm. and on. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, so the open, flexible learning system out here ingrained in the uh, liberal art schema is drawing. Uh, students from uh, across the globe uh, students are quite happy as we interviewed two of them uh, so the gross happiness index of the students pursuing studies uh, technical and engineering studies in a liberal arts institution uh, is pretty high uh, we will move on to our next destination uh, in this campus walk of ours uh, we are now with professor Thyagarajan uh, who is the head of the corporate resource center at the APJ Satya University a man of few words but immense action. Uh, we welcome you, sir. Uh, so what makes your students love you at this university? We are, we are having a liberal art approach and also we are having a, a good uh, training program with a lot of activities and also we have got a good industry connect. Mm -hmm. That's why the students are very happy. Okay, so what kind of uh, corporate relations you are having for the students out here? Me, yeah, as, uh, as I told you that I am uh, executive director of Faridabad Management Association, I got linkages with various industries. Mm -hmm. And uh, I work closely with various industries and I have got uh, linkages in Faridabad, Gurgaon, Manesar. Mm -hmm. And then some companies in Noida. Mm -hmm. I keep visiting them and I for the, uh, the call, call them for a industry guest mm -hmm. lectures and also visit them and organize mm -hmm. industry visits and I've been developing all these relations for mark to market concept which is very crucial to the corporate resource center. Mm -hmm. We build the students according to the market. Mm -hmm. Whatever the industry requires we bring mm -hmm. it here mm -hmm. and we try to mm -hmm. 
uh, build up the students according to the needs of the industry. Mm -hmm. So apart from the mainstream corporate world, what kind of focus do you give uh, to the employment in the small and medium enterprises? Uh, we actually we focus uh, as per the requirement of the students, what kind of industry they want to go. Most of the students want to go to the big industry only. Mm -hmm. But small industry, no one wants to go. Mm -hmm. But we motivate them. Mm -hmm. to, uh, to motivate them so that uh, we tell them that all the learnings are from the small industry. Mm -hmm. In the big industry, there are a lot of uh, uh, work. In a particular department, there may be a lot of work. But you will be learning only a part of work. Mm -hmm. In a small industry, you get to mm -hmm. know the total total work mm. from the industry. So apart from the industry placements, like what kind of other options you suggest mm. to the students? We, we, we are having the entrepreneurship cell mm -hmm. and we have got uh, linkages with NEN. Mm -hmm. We develop students for to become the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And entrepreneur, uh, then uh, we also focus the stu students to take up NGO careers also. Mm -hmm. So we when does the student career. in his own academic life cycle come in touch with the CRC? Uh, they are in, in normal touch with CRC. We have got slots every week. Mm -hmm. We have got three slots every week. Right from and their uh, yeah, right, right, from, right, right from the first year itself. Okay. And uh, uh, they, we have got a module called training and competency building module. Mm -hmm. It is actually being. Uh, we have got two persons here. Those, those who are looking after. One is looking after the training. And there is a co competency mapping of the students. Mm -hmm. So you also have got some international students out here. What yeah, special yeah, yeah. you are doing about the In, International students, they have come here for the first time. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are trying to concentrate them, uh, put them for internship in the NGOs mm -hmm. or international organizations. Mm -hmm. And what kind of research linkages you develop for the institution at large? Research linkages, I actually bring about the industries uh, and uh, get in touch with the faculty. Mm -hmm. and connect the faculty to industry mm -hmm. and also the faculty we send the faculty to i as crc also send the faculty to the industries mm -hmm. for training so mm -hmm. that they get together and mm -hmm. work on research project or live projects mm -hmm. so what has been the role of this design and innovation center which you have mm -hmm. uh, in the gross placements of the students out here the design and innovation center we are involving other industries also mm -hmm. i am trying to bring the industries so that they can help us in uh, making making changes and also mm -hmm. suggesting some innovations and other mm -hmm. things. Uh, so uh, the APG Satya University has the distinction of having a linkage with its own parent company, the Swan Group of Industries. Yeah, yeah. So what kind of strategic leverage you provide to the students vis-a-vis -vis the Swan Group is concerned? Swan Group, uh, we are very totally interlinked group mm -hmm. and we uh, keep actually uh, 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 close connection with all the group mm -hmm. and whatever programs are happening in other institutions our students are also going mm -hmm. and we are going to have a fest our other institutions are also going to come here we are we are very close knit family okay okay so here we had professor thyagarajan out of his immaculate experience in industry and academia at large who is providing a all rounded uh, corporate interface to the students at the apj satya university and uh, as we can see in this corporate rela uh, relations center that uh, 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 following a liberal arts approach it's again a very open space where all the team members are working in very close coordination and making the mark the mark to the market approach which they have adopted uh, to put their all their uh, graduates to meaningful locations in industry and a whole lot of other enterprises we'll move on to our next destination in this campus work of ours we are going to cross a uh, LOC out here, but the LOC out here means the line of creativity. So let's unravel what's inside, uh, what's all creative is going on in this uh, creative room. <coughs> After having crossed the line of creativity, uh, we have come across Professor Devendu Tripathi, who is the coordinator of the School of uh, Design and Visual Arts. Uh, so what this school is all about, what all activities you undergo? Actually, in School of Design and Visual Arts, we are offering uh, fashion designing, space designing, and digital media. Mm -hmm. actually, actually, we have uh, two levels of uh, uh, teaching. One is foundation. Foundation is common for all the specializations. Mm -hmm. And uh, next is uh, uh, three uh, next three years uh, for specialization. And last semester, especially in eighth semester, we send all the students to the industry. Mm -hmm. So this is the basic structure of our... Uh, 
Uh, we were told that this school of uh, design and visual uh, arts uh, interface very closely with the school of engineering and technology. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so what's the exact interrelation? Actually, we actually uh, insist our student uh, to be uh, more creative, more innovative. And for that, visual communication is very important. Mm -hmm. Without visual communication, without basic drawing skill, you cannot uh, visualize anything. Mm -hmm. So that is the basic part of our uh, teaching. So how much of the engineering students do participate in the courses and curriculum of this school? Exactly. This is uh, more than 30 to 40 students mm -hmm. in a batch mm -hmm. because we have seat limitation mm -hmm. of 30 to 40 students. Okay, okay. And what kind of products you have been designing out here because there is quite a lot of focus on the applied part it of is, it. Uh, actually, this is uh, depends on different type of issues. Like students, uh, they uh, means uh, decide any uh, means different type of problem they try to solve it through design mm -hmm. okay that may be a product or different type of issues or uh, innovative any any type of ideas and all how are you linked with the center of design and innovation uh, this is everything is everything is uh, all together mm -hmm. means this, there is no partition like this is for designers mm -hmm. this is for engineers mm -hmm. actually uh, at means total teamwork this is basically teamwork mm -hmm. teamwork of designers visualizers mm -hmm. and uh, engineers mm -hmm. we all work together mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. so so on the other side of the line of creativity we have uh, quite accommodating uh, faculty members who say that design is an ingrained concept and they are drawing they are attracting students from the other disciplines as well into the core uh, uh, practice of design and visual arts the visual communication which is taking so eminence and prominence in today's time when lots and lots of products have to be differentiated in terms of their experience and in terms of their market differentiators. Uh, so the School of Design and Visual Arts has a critical and an important role to play in the whole academic landscape at APJ Satya University. Uh, we would be moving on to the next destination of ours in this campus walks. Till then, stay tuned. Sitting in the studio of the School of journalism and mass communication at the APJ Satya University. Uh, we have with us Professor Sapnil Kumar, uh, who is the coordinator of the school. Uh, we welcome you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, so and welcome to the studio. Uh, so it's a quietly nice done facility. Uh, yeah. It's quite professional one. Yeah. Uh, so what order inspired you to create such a facility in a school of mass communication? Well, uh, surprisingly, uh, School of Journalism Mass Communication is the is the newest member of AS ASU. We started okay. our program two years ago. Okay. And the first thing that we wanted is to uh, create a studio which would cater to both audio and visual production needs. Mm -hmm. And um, it took us at least uh, six months to uh, get this done uh, we did didn't spare any cost uh, it comes to uh, couldn't compromise on any any on any terms when it comes to the quality what happens is uh, what happened is this the soundproofing was, was exceptionally expensive here mm -hmm. and we had to call an expert from Mumbai mm -hmm. to get it done mm -hmm. um, and we are pretty proud of it uh, uh, in no way in, in no way we are a very uh, well furnished uh, studio but uh, uh, as we grow as it keep growing we add uh, more equipment and hopefully we keep ourselves updated with the latest technology. So how this studio is a center of the entire programs which are run by the school? Right for example from the, st uh, from the start we actually take classes in the studio. Okay. So there are classes if I'm teaching uh, lighting if I'm, I bring them here and we uh, get some uh, get some actors and we light them in different scenarios and once the once the uh, class is over the students take over they give uh, we give them assignments mm -hmm. to you know to replicate some lighting situations mm -hmm. and this is where the uh, this is done mm -hmm. also a uh, uh, lot of the radio production happens in the studio because of the uh, you know the the, the audio soundproofing. The soundproofing. We have had guests from all over the all of the country. They visit here, and we, whenever they come here, we we make sure that for at least for half an hour they visit the mm -hmm. studio. So this is where they stand. We put on radios. Mm -hmm. We have all set up. Mm -hmm. uh, all, the, all the wiring has already been done. The recording takes place inside, and. Um, uh, the, the most, uh, you know, the interesting part is we've had students from other schools come here and they get fascinated by the fact that the radio, or the, the, like the studio is a very glamorous, spa mm -hmm. glamorous space, mm -hmm. but the reality is it takes a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. you need to, so mm -hmm. my the idea is to, you know, to, to bust that myth that mm -hmm. uh, uh, mass communication is a very glamorous, it is glamorous for people who are sitting in front of the camera, mm -hmm. but uh, behind every uh, Pranab Roy or Barkha mm -hmm. there are 20, 25 people working mm -hmm. who are, uh, 
who are you know uh, are as There's important. a lot of sweat behind yeah. all that glitz yeah. which comes. Yeah, they are with they, they are as important as anybody mm-hmm. else. And say so your university is known to be having uh, different approaches uh, in carrying out different programs. So what is the paradigm shift you have brought about in teaching mass communication to the students? Well, uh, you know. Uh, I have been taught in US, I did my uh, masters in US and th- this one thing that I learned is uh, mass communication cannot be learned through books. Mm-hmm. So for the first, uh, uh, the first thing that we do is we don't subscribe to any, any, any uh, written uh, source material. Okay. So there are no books, we don't give them, give out books. As, there is, of course there is a library and there uh, I always encourage students to go out there and study books, get some, you know, uh, read through some experiences of other uh, industry professionals. But for the most part, 80% uh, of our curriculum is hands-on. Okay. So okay. Um, the other thing is, uh, in the industry, in the media, when you go, and go, go for your first job, I don't see, if, even if you were a graduate from uh, Columbia School, they would care for your degree. What they will care for is for your portfolio. Mm-hmm. So I think the emphasis on, is on creating the portfolio, not getting degree, uh, getting grades and credits and all those things, or passing exams. Mm-hmm. There is a written component, mm-hmm. there is a final exam, mm-hmm. everybody goes through that, mm-hmm. but that is, for the most part, 30% of your entire mm-hmm. grade. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. 70% of it is continuous assessment, mm-hmm. which includes a mm-hmm. lot of hands-on training. Mm-hmm. So in today's era of convergence, where all the media types are getting converged, be it the radio, be it the television, be it the internet, the social, uh, what kind of approach you are doing to train your students for an age of a converge, converged media? I think this is uh, very interesting. That I tell this to uh, all my students that even 50 years from now, the technology is going to change. Uh, it's going to change, you know. But the one thing that is r- remain constant is content creators. Mm-hmm. What we are are content creators. Uh, 50 years ago, there was no uh, iPod. 30 years ago, there was no, uh, you know, internet. But there were still people who were creating content creators. Mm-hmm. You know, this, there's never going to be an, uh, a situation where you don't need content creators. You always, so I promote, uh, you know, the way we treat, uh, train them is to be content, content providers so that they can, uh, they can, of course, the technology is going to keep improving and there'll be more, uh, uh, you know, uh, paradigm shifts, as you said. Mm-hmm. There'll be more uh, uh, avenues. But the job responsibility of a content, con- the responsibility and the job uh, requirement of a content producer is always going to be there. So what kind of mix you develop the students for between the content creation part of it, mm-hmm. uh, the first principles of content creation mm-hmm. to the uh, applied principles or the skills of content dissemination through multiple technological... Well, the, what, what has changed is obviously, what has changed is the distribution yeah. uh, platform, right? Uh, the content remains the same. So for example, what happens is, um, if I try to, if I teach them how to make a, uh, make a movie, what what happens is the the principles of, me, of filmmaking remain the same. Either you make it for a for a motion picture release or for a YouTube. What happens is the uh, the, the shift or what I I've personally what I've done to my curriculum map, how I update is is add more avenues to uh, very subtle changes. For example, if you're writing for uh, if you're writing for a television show, mm-hmm. look at what see what your audience is. How do you how do you target an audience and how do you write for an audience mm-hmm. when you're writing for YouTube, which is basically uh, is all about instant gratification. Mm-hmm. So you can't have you don't have the liberties to uh, have a start, middle, and the end. Mm-hmm. You basically have to go right th- mm-hmm. into the conflict, right uh, from the start. So th- there are very subtle changes, but for the most part, uh, we stick to very aesthetics of 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 teaching here uh, uh, because I, I I personally believe that technology is. Uh, Change in technology is constant, mm-hmm. but again, uh, the uh, the principles on how you start creating them remain uh, remain uh, remain mm-hmm. to be rooted, mm-hmm. and the students have to be rooted to that. The fundamentals. So today's market realities and economic realities, new and new media outfits, smaller outfits mm-hmm. are coming across. Mm-hmm. Who are in the lookout for rounded professionals mm-hmm. who have the uh, well trained in the first principles, but as well as uh, technically resounded ones. So mm-hmm. how are you matching up with these market expectations? Well, I think that's the that's the best part about uh, the liberal arts approach. Mm-hmm. I have a course called electronic production. Mm-hmm where uh, students from engineering, management, uh, pharma, they mm-hmm. come and t- learn uh, video, uh, videography, filmmaking. Now, one would wonder why would they need uh, filmmaking? Why does an uh, engineer need a filmmaking mm-hmm. degree? Mm-hmm. You can start your own blog. You can, you can, if you have a website, you can, if you're doing a project, you can, sh- you can shoot them. You can see visual medium is, is, you know, is more receptive, audience is more receptive to a visual medium. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think, even for our students, mass communication, I encourage them to go and take management classes, how okay. to promote yourself. Okay. Okay, you shouldn't go and take uh, uh, pharma classes where they can mm-hmm. they can be aware of uh, how what is the different avenues. For example, to, uh, 50 years ago, there was if you want to be a get into media, it was film, 
-hmm. All right. Now you have television. You mm -hmm. have uh, you have uh, 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 advertising. Mm -hmm. You have documentary filmmaking. Mm -hmm. You have uh, you know um, well, commercial mm -hmm. commercials for. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, corporate houses. Mm -hmm. So there are so many avenues now, and you have to. Now is the age you start creating your own market. Mm -hmm. The the filmmaking, the uh, television is all saturated. There's mm -hmm. no there's lot of competition. Mm -hmm. So now is the time you should create your own market. For example, as photographers, mm -hmm. I teach photography as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think so there's any more jobs available for uh, for uh, sports journalists because mm -hmm. there there are thousands of them. There's, there's a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. There are you know uh, uh, freelancers as well. So the new avenue is the, that. Uh, that uh, I have actually created is I have I went to these malls uh, in Gurgaon mm -hmm. to all these places where they have this, these shoes shoes and bags mm -hmm. and we tell them we'll make a catalog for you like a video uh, catalog visual yeah, catalog visual thing. catalog and personal catalog for you mm -hmm. that this market doesn't hasn't been existing for uh, there are people who are doing this but so, so the emerging market need you are uh, customizing yeah, your yeah, programs and yeah, to create a, like students to think in that exactly, innovative yeah. fashion like eBay eBay uh, taking photographs for and if you want to sell a product on eBay, there are pe now people have made a profession out of it. Mm -hmm. They go to your house, they take a photograph of your of your stuff. You give, you get they get paid, and then they can post those uh, videos on uh, videos or uh, photographs on uh, mm -hmm. on the web. Mm -hmm. So you know the today is the age you have to create your own market, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that's I think that though people who are able to mm -hmm. do that will survive in, mm -hmm. in the long run. Mm -hmm. So here we come to the close of this exciting campus walks at the APJ Satya University, uh, which happens to be India's first uh, liberal arts and meta university. Uh, true to its claim uh, towards our entire journey for the whole day, we have found that the entire concepts of interdisciplinary learning uh, are really full in vogue and uh, departments and schools are interfacing with each other. And eventually, as destiny would have it, that we have landed up in an alter ego in a studio at APJ Satya University, where we are concluding this campus work of ours. Uh, <clears throat> uh, how even the media, the school of media, is interfacing with the school of engineering and technology, uh, with their courses being taken up by the students, engineering students into film production, and the uh, media students taking up courses in the school of business studies so as to be able to create their own business ventures in times to come so this is truly an upcoming uh, meta university uh, founded on the firm principles of liberal arts and we have seen enough examples of those breaking the barriers and breaking the glass ceilings across the board how the liberal arts approach has been really put to use uh, we hope that apj satya university would be carrying on this mission, this commitment of theirs and would be guiding the engineering space, the educational space, the higher educational space across the country in times to come. Uh, we would be back again with yet another campus walk of yet another exciting and interesting campus. Till then, goodbye. Any liberal arts institution without a sporting facility doesn't fit into the overall design. So we, at APJ Satya University, there is a sprawling sporting complex. Uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Saurabh Daya and Dr. Mahesh Kumar Sharma, who look after the entire sporting facilities and sporting activities at APJ Satya University. Uh, so Dr. Daya, what all sporting activities do you have at uh, uh, APJ Satya University? Sir, as you know, uh, APJ Satya University is a confluence of uh, research and technology with uh, liberal arts. And uh, in this journey of uh, uh, moving towards uh, excellence in academics, we have not left behind uh, sports at all. Our sports is uh, a main activity and which goes hands in hands with our research and technology environment among the students. And for uh, this, we motivate our young uh, minds, our engineers, pharmacists and all other media design, all students to take part in various activities uh, comprising mainly outdoor. Uh, which is uh, like football court we have, then uh, volleyball, then uh, this uh, uh, this international lawn tennis uh, multi-purpose court, also having facilities for uh, uh, basketball, and then also uh, uh, indoor activities such as uh, our carom board, uh, chess, uh, table tennis, and so on. And all these activities are not only uh, spread in this uh, cam uh, in this uh, uh, green area uh, they are mainly the outdoor activities but they are also housed in the hostels in near vicinity for the students like whenever even in the evenings if they want to enjoy 
टेबल टेनिस दे कैन डू सो इन देयर लाइक बॉयज हॉस्टल सेपरेटली एंड गर्ल्स हॉस्टल सेपरेटली वी ऑल्सो डू हैव बैडमिंटन फॉर देम इन द हॉस्टल्स इट सेल्फ सो आवर मेन एम एंड विजन इज टू मेक ए पी जे सत्या यूनिवर्सिटी कैंपस ए स्पोर्टिंग कैंपस दैट्स रियली फैबुलस डॉक्टर महेश ये बताइए कि स्पोर्ट्स का ओवरऑल जो शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में जो योगदान है बातें तो बहुत की जाती हैं बट किस तरीके से ए पी जे सत्या यूनिवर्सिटी में इसको कोर्स का एक अभिन्न अंग बनाया गया है ए फिजिकल एजुकेशन को इसमें सारी चीज़ एक्टिविटीज आ जाती हैं आपका रीडिंग है स्टडीज है इसके प्रैक्टिकल वर्क है फुट वर्क वर्क है और इसकी आउटस्टैंडिंग है तो ये सब चीज़ें बहुत जरूरी हैं जो कि स्पोर्ट्स को हम धीरे धीरे जैसे पहले इंडिया में नहीं होता था धीरे धीरे हर स्पोर्ट्स के फील्ड में बहुत हम आगे आ चुके हैं जैसे अब जैसे आप बॉक्सिंग को ले लो पहले कुछ नहीं था ओलंपिक्स में भी लेके आए शूटिंग्स में हम लेके आ रहे हैं तो इस तरह से स्पोर्ट्स को धीरे धीरे स्कूल और कॉलेज से ही स्पोर्ट्स निकलता है और वो ही आगे जाके लॉन्ग लार्ज लेवल पे जाके एशिया नेशनल चैंपियनशिप ओलंपिक्स में हम पार्टिसिपेट करते हैं और उसी में जाके धीरे धीरे काफी किस तरह की प्रतिभागिता आप देखते हैं यहाँ के स्टूडेंट्स में यहाँ के स्टूडेंट्स में जैसे अभी इंटरनेशनल स्टूडेंट्स हैं बास्केटबॉल एंड फुटबॉल इज गुड अचीवमेंट्स एंड वॉलीबॉल एक्सिलेंट टीम एथलेटिक्स इवेंट्स एंड ट्रैक इवेंट्स और थ्रो इवेंट्स जंपिंग इवेंट्स इसमें काफी योगदान है बच्चों का आप स्पोर्ट्स में डॉक्टरेट हैं हमें सुबह वाइस चांसलर साहब ने बताया कि अकेली यूनिवर्सिटी है जहाँ पे कम्युनिटी सर्विस का क्रेडिट दिया जाता है तो क्या स्पोर्ट्स में भी कुछ अध्यापन का कार्य होता है यहाँ पे फिजिकल एजुकेशन सब्जेक्ट एथलेटिक्स एंड फिजिकल एजुकेशन सब्जेक्ट इससे रिलेटेड ट्रैक इवेंट्स जो हम स्टडी कराते हैं इंजुरीज है अवार्ड है इस तरह का फर्स्ट एड है ये सब चीजें हमारे उसमें आ जाती है तो ये हम स्टडी भी कराते हैं प्लस में हम वर्किंग भी कराते हैं और ये सब कैंपस <laughs> and the very fact that two uh, senior gentlemen have been given the owners and the target to propagate and propound the activities in the sporting space is uh, a real uh, acknowledgement of the commitment of the management at APJ Satya University which aims at creating a truly liberal arts institution which is open which is flexible where students and faculty come together and they learn and they research and they innovate in in the rightful spirit uh so this we were at the sporting complex at the apj satya university uh during our campus walks